Uh, good morning, everyone. This is a recorded class. Uh, today, I have somewhere to go today, and so I won't be able to give the class at a regular time. Uh, someone's supposed to be coming and picking me up. So if they come and pick me up late, so the class will go into uh, 8.15. But as it is now, I'm starting early. Okay, so today we're finishing, finishing what we began last week. And last week, we uh, we began a, um, uh, a mime or an essay in this book called uh, Lakuti Torah, Sefer called Lakuti Torah. And in it, it's talking about <clears throat> what does it mean that the Jewish people will be, can make God revealed in this world and get forgiven for all their sins. <clears throat> because this is talking about last week's Torah portion, but there's a lot of years where last week's Torah portion, Akhre, and this week's Torah portion, Kedoshim, are linked together. So it's no contradiction to this week's Torah portion. Talk about to learn about this week's Torah portion. Okay, so I have to take a second. Okay. <clears throat> so last week we learned that there's a holiday in Judaism which is called Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur comes 10 days after New Year's, Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah, we celebrate the date that Adam was created, the first man was created, which is the sixth day of creation. And 10 days after that, we celebrate the day of forgiveness. Yom Kippur means the day of forgiveness, that God forgives us. And it's also called the day of repentance because repentance is, I guess, the closest way you can say in English what the day really is. It's the day of tshuva. Tshuva means to return to your source. So a person that does sins, it's only because he doesn't feel who he is. She, he, she. If a person would feel their soul, <clears throat> they would never do sins of any kind. They would always want to do what it says in the Torah. They would feel that there is a creator and they would feel the creator is good. And they would start to feel that the creator must have given us some sort of directions in the world. And when you look around, you find the only time that he ever did that was when he gave the Torah. At least that's what the Jewish people claim. So a person that really becomes interested in connecting to the Creator and doing what the Creator wants is it's only through the Torah. The Jewish people have what's called 613 commandments and the non-Jews have what's called seven commandments, seven laws in general. <clears throat> okay, but Generally speaking, this is talking to the Jewish people because the Jewish people have a special job to the world and that is to educate the world. That's what Jews, what are we supposed to educate the world to? That there is a God and that God is intimately close to us and he creates us and that he cares about us and that he gave us the biggest gift of all responsibility and that we have a reason to be alive, a reason to wake up in the morning. And when a person really feels God and God is our, our creator, it's, it's your soul. You feel your soul. And your soul is your connection to God. Every person feels it. So if every person would really feel God, then no one would ever be depressed. No one would ever be lustful. There wouldn't be any addictions or or um, wars or depression or anything. Nothing bad because people would feel alive. There's a reason for them to be. And God is not just in a book. God is creating us. Okay, so, so here the, this is the direction to the Jews, how to wake up the Jews, which, by the way, is the answer to this all these problems, what's going on in the campus. Maybe I'll make a, a small video about this. I think I will. And and namely, you know, the, the, the everybody all of a sudden is very interested and very uh, concerned about the Palestinian people and what's going to be with them and how bad the Jews are and how bad we're treating them and the Palestinians, the Palestinians. And there's so much other, first of all, there's so much other injustice going on in the world it doesn't bother people, number one. And number two, 98% uh, of the whole story of what's going on in there that we're killing people, it's all made up. It's just all false numbers. And nobody cares. 
strangely enough, no one cares. No one talks about, you know, that we're that these Hamas people are swearing to kill us, and everyone's saying, no, they're justified in doing it, and we're not justified, and they are just. It's, the whole business is really strange. It says in the in the Bible, in the Holy Bible, it says in the book of Deuteronomy, and I'll bring it up. I think I'll make a small song thing that if the Jewish people don't connect to God, below ill, he assumed he like him. It says they Jew, the Jewish people made me angry with their their idol worship and, and with their uh, empty emptiness. As um, I'm going to make them mad with a non-nation. In other words, they believe in a non-God. I'm going to make them have, make them. I'm sorry. I'm going to 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 send as as a retribution or whatever, a wake-up call, a non-nation. And that's what the Palestinians are. It's a non-nation. It just didn't exist before '48, before '67. The thing that just didn't exist. There was no people like that. There was no. They have no flag. There's no nothing. But everybody is, you know, really interested. And even the English, even the, the Jews in Israel, they say, oh, yes, there is a Palestinian people. But there is a Palestinian. Okay, so the point is, why is this whole business to return the Jews back to doing Torah and the commandments? Oh. So when the Jews return back to doing Torah and the commandments, and that's what the Creator wants us to do, then that solves all the problems, all the problems, all the problems, all the problems, financial problems, emotional problems, health problems, family problems, uh, the, 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 the economic problems. It, it all depends on the Jews. That's what we believe. That's what it says in the Torah. It all depends on the Jews doing what they're supposed to do. That's what all the depends on. Okay, so what are we supposed to do? So that's what this mimer is talking about. That's the day of Yom Kippur. It's no new thing that Jewish people don't do what God wants. God implanted in us a probability factor of maybe like a hundred to one that we will do what he wants, right? A hundred to one. You know, there's a hundred to one chance that we will do what we what he wants. One out of a hundred, because the whole world and everything is around us. But that one percent that we will do, that's what's going to win. That's going to be victorious. And not only will it be victorious, it'll transform the other ninety nine percent to be also good, because the world is essentially good. Okay, what do we have to do? So the Rebbe said, thought, speech, and action. Thought is prayer. Speech is learning Torah. Action is doing the commandments. When we do that, then we become like a wick. And that holds on to the fire of God. And that illuminates the whole world. That's what we learned last week. Remember? Okay. Toast with beer. Here we go. Ine, the toast with beer, an extra, a, an additional explanation. A katu, what it says, Hashem. That God is a consuming fire. You have to remember, mention. Just like. I just want to look at the safer here to see if I'm doing. Okay. Let's just give me one moment, please. One moment. There's the first page. page. No, no, no. Uh, we did this. Okay. Now, next paragraph. Right? I'm sorry. I was right. Okay. Here we go. That we did last time, and now we're doing the last. Here we are. Last paragraph. Oh. He, he may be heard. Moshe Rabbi, you know, Moses, it says, Okay, so that's what the Rabbi says. By means of doing tshuva, tshuva means returning. By means of returning back to God from, with tremendous love, because God is creating us. He's infinitely good to us. He loves us. We'll never be able to reflect the it completely the love that God has for us. He's creating us. We can't create anything, and He's doing it just for free. And so when we return this love by doing what God wants with big love, then as Zadonos says, then even purposeful sins become merits. Why? Because just like by means of the merits, the soul becomes elevated. Remember, we said like the the the, uh, the the cedar tree that you bend it down and it flips way way up high. And just like that, the soul will be elevated by means of bitterness. This bitterness, because of the zadonos, you become very bitter because you say, you realize, wow, I have <clears throat> done all these bad things. The whole problem in the world is me, and I just can just have to turn around and just do the Torah and the commandments. 
Uh, that bitterness that you feel that all the problems you see on the college campuses, and there's one person that is responsible for it all. And every person says it to himself. That one person that's responsible is me. I was supposed to, I'm supposed to do what God wants. As soon as I do what God wants, then everything's going to be okay. <clears throat> and of course, a person will say, oh, come on, I'm not going to, that exactly, that voice saying, oh, come on, that's the cause of the whole business. You, I'm not important. Oh, come on, what do you, whatever. The fact is, is every human being, especially every Jew, is tremendously important <clears throat> to God, and everyone is a game changer. A little bit of light makes a lot of darkness. When a person starts to think, because I'm not making light, that's the whole problem, then you realize that <clears throat> it's my fault. Suddenly, you become very bitter. And you say, well, I, won't, I don't want to do that anymore. No matter how much I want, right, I'm not going to avoid keeping Shabbat, not put on tefillin, not eat kosher food. I won't do those. I'm not going to act naturally anymore. I'm going to act the way God wants me to. I'm going to act like a Jew. When that happens, is now then not should the soul will come be elevated by means of this bitterness. And then the, the, the bitterness that is you receive <coughs> from being so low, that's like the cedar tree that was way down. It flips a person back up that becomes what's called Bali Chuba, a person that returns. Okay, so the Rebbe is, is saying here that the solution to all the world's problems begins and ends with the Jews. Huh? So it's no wonder that everybody suddenly, mysteriously, hates all the Jews. I mean, the Jews in the campuses, they can't figure out what's going on. You know, why in the world? I, mean, I, I look like everybody else. I act like everybody else. I think like everybody else. I watch the same television programs, and I do everything. But I don't do anything Jewish, like all those people that were in the massacre. And that they weren't doing anything Jewish whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. They weren't acting like Jews. They weren't. They didn't look like Jews. They weren't. But they were Jews, and because they were Jews, they got killed. It's the same thing with Hitler, with all the people. What the, 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 in, in Germany? It was perhaps the most assimilated country ever. Intermarriage was a tremendously high rate. The people did everything they could not to have any sort of sign to, of being Jewish. And they got massacred. Right? They go, why Why were they massacred? Right? They thought that it would be in Greece. Same thing with the Zionists. Because we're going to act not Jewish. We're not going to be. We're going to be like everybody else. We'll be like everyone else. And then we'll be liked by everybody else. And it just doesn't work. Why? Because after all, we're Jews. We just, you know, so now let's, instead of trying to act like everybody else, let's act like ourselves. Let's try to act like ourselves. That's called Bali Chuba. Return to your true identity. In Moshe Rabbeinu, in Moses, it says, it says by, that after the Jewish people worshipped the golden calf, so it says by Moses that Moses requested from God, please forgive us. And God said, okay, I will. And he showed Moses the 13 attributes of mercy. But before he did, it says he put him into this cleft that was in a rock in, in, the, in the mountain. Kamola Moshe, for instance, tzur, or chalamish. For instance, he, he calls it a tzur. Tzur is like a big rock. A tzur, a rock, a chalamish, like a flint stone. That you prepare to bring out fire. It's concealed. And it's not there. You see, you ever see a flint stone? There used to be a thing I remember. I used to be a heavy, heavy smoker a long time ago. I used to have a zippo. Uh, the way you have to flip it open, you could flip it open, you could play it. Anyway, so it the way it worked was there was just a little wheel which was had little iron sort of ridges on it. And you turn this wheel, and there was a little piece of flint that stuck up. I think it was flint stuck up. And this flint, and it would make a spark, and that spark would ignite the, the, the wick which was right nearby, and that would light the whole thing. So it was a it was a very common thing. People knew what a flint stone was. It was a little stone that made a big spark. Huh? Made a big spark. So it says. <clears throat> if you take this stone itself, just take out the stone, a little tiny stone, but there's also bigger stones. <clears throat> so there's no fire in there at all. You would never, you could put it under water, right? And it's, you take it out of water, dry it off, you hit it and it makes a spark. Where is that spark found? It says the spark is concealed. Just like a, it says, God, so it says, God put Moses in the crack, in the cleft, in a crack 
in a rock. The rock was called a tzur. He says, let's take a tzur. A, a tzur means a big stone. A stone, like take a flintstone, says the Rebbe. A flintstone has inside of it fire, but it's only in potential. And it's not actual. Also the same thing. It's also, it's called a tzur. Tzur, chayenu. God is also called a tzur. Tzur means chayenu. A tzur means a bundle. Tzur also means a bundle, to bundle up. Tzur. Tzur means a rock, and it also means the same word, means a bundle. God is called the bundle of light. Because he is the source of all. The call. Call Shorshe Havayas. He is the source of all of the sources of existence. Shorsh Havaya, the source of existence and the source of all the names of God, who Bo Behelam is concealed. So the Shorsh Havaya, the source of this, is in it concealed. God's name is concealed, the Loba Pola, not actually. Shemi Bechin Hashem Havaya, that in the name of God, which is Shehu Mahave, that he brings into existence all beings, the Mahave, just put a little Yud in front of it, means constant creation. Hove means to be, and Yud, that's God's name. We don't say this name. You're not supposed to say the name of God. <coughs> he brings into existence all being, from nothing to something. So if so, here we got God is not just this biblical figure that he sits up on the, in the sky and he's really far away from us. No, God is creating us. God is enlivening us. There is no existence except for God. That's what it means that God is one. God is creating all being. It doesn't mean that all being is God, but it means that all being is coming from nothing. God is bringing it from nothing. So there's nothing else but God. And this fact that God brings all existence from nothing to something, that's like the flame that comes out, a spark that comes out of this rock. This is like fire. Oh, this is like a consuming fire, we said. This level of the tzur, the rock, that from it comes all this creation, this is the, 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 the fire. <clears throat> the esh ochla, the anal, comes, so it says the, the rock itself, which is Hashem, God, he is the source of all being. Like we said before, the God himself is much, much too real to say that he exists. God does not exist. God creates all existence. So God is the source of all being. Source of all being. So if a person starts to think about this, then he starts to think, wow, how is it that God is creating me? Well, a normal person doesn't think about this. But a person that has done sins is forced to think about it. Why? Because suddenly he thinks, one second, I, in my whole life, my whole being, nothing is more sure than I exist, here I am. And that's a lie. I'm, I'm living my life by in this lie, and I'm certain of it, 100%. I'm willing to fight for it. I'm, dude, I get angry. I get depressed if my eye doesn't get what it wants to do this. And suddenly you realize that's wrong. Where is this eye coming from? And suddenly a person realizes that this eye is coming from the source of all existence. And that's called Gadol Koch of this power. That's Bali Chuvi. You return back to the source that this person reaches to this level of the Tzur. He can reach to this level of the Tzur, the rock, the source of all being. Kamola Mashal, for instance, in Nikhba Meora Ish, if there is extinguished a fire, Motsima Ish, then you bring new fire out from a flintstone. Kaka Inyan Babalchuba. So it is also in a Balchuba, a person who is a, if you want to call it for better lack of a better word, a penitent. A person that, that that returns back to God, this is a person that his fire has gone out. There is gone the light of the fire, this consuming fire, which is what's keeping us all connected to the Creator. Why is that the fire of God is not connected to them? Because they haven't got any wick. What did we say the wick was before? Doing good deeds, prayer. Torah, and charity, commandments. We said that's the wick that holds on to the fire of God. A person that doesn't have that wick, so what's he got? Nothing. It's all, no such thing as God. It's cold. He's got, it's like a, a rock before you strike it. A flintstone before you strike it. Because he hasn't got any wick to grab onto the fire. She'em aim Torah, which we said that's the Torah and doing good deeds. That's the wick. Hine al amarirus, by means of bitterness, by means of bitterness, uh, 
One second, what happened? Tequila. Nine al yid amrinos by means of the, this big bitterness, great bitterness, the nekudas alev in the inner point of your heart, shulam mailam yam zaman, which is above time, the ein chifetz bezaman, and you don't care anything about time or place at all. Shemuz b'chayin nafsho that you you're disgusted with your own whole being. Like Eliezer ben Durdaya, like the story of Eliezer ben Durdaya, <clears throat> Shabbacha, that he cried until his soul went out. Eliezer ben Durdaya, we talked about this before, it's a story in the Talmud, that there was a, a rich man called Eliezer ben Durdaya. And he must have been a pretty robust sort of person, because his thing was is that he wanted to experience every prostitute in the world. And so he went around the, the, the experiences of prostitutes. Finally, he heard that there was this one, a Jewish guy, right? So he, he, got, he hears this one prostitute somewhere in, the, in some island or something. And he goes there and she's, uh, uh, you know, he has to climb up this ladder or something in order to get to her. She has this whole thing planned out. And uh, he gets up to the top. And at the top, I don't want to tell the, it's sort of a disgusting story. Anyway, he sneezes, right? That's a nice way of saying it. He sneezes and she says to him, just like that sneeze went out and it'll never come back, Reb Eliezer ben Dordaya has gone away from God and he's never going to come back. And he heard that. Usually he would say, well, say what you want to about me. You know, I'm, that's, I, I'm not interested at all about your opinions. I just want my pleasures, you know. But she, he heard that and suddenly it clicked in him that she was right, that she was right. And he said, my whole entire being has been devoted to a big lie, to being cutting myself off from my creator. Like those, you have the, 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 the cartoons of the guy sitting on the edge of a branch with the saw cutting off the, the branch of the tree. You know, the, the, <clears throat> he's supposed to sit on the other side, close to the, suddenly he realizes, what am I doing? What, what, what am I doing? And he got bitter and he came down from the, the ladder and he said, he put his head down to the ground, fell on his knees and he cried and his soul went out. Says his soul went on because he, he was disgusted with every fiber of his will and his life. <clears throat> what am I doing with myself? <clears throat> my whole past, my present, and my whole future is devoted to destroying myself, suicide. What am I doing? Right? I, I thought it was a, I was doing the most wonderful, you know, pleasurable, fulfilling thing in the world, and I realized that you know, I'm just playing in the toilet. I'm doing exactly the opposite. He is disgusted with all of his life. So it says his soul went out, and it says that Rabbi Akiva heard from heaven. It says, happy is a his name was Rabbi Elazar ben Durdaya, Rav. He was called a rabbi. He got smicha from this thing. He became a rabbi. And he says, Rabbi Elazar ben Durdaya. And it says, happy is a person that he he reaches the highest levels, Kones Olamo, it says, in just one, mov one movement. Shabbacha, that he cried until his soul went out. Ah, Machman said, because of this, but why? Because he reached this level of the tzur, of the stone from which comes all being, all life. Just like it's an example, just like a flint stone that comes out the fire. Is this is the source of all life? La Maila Maila, he reached this level which is above the 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 how do you say from any sort of existence that there is of time and place. Which, by the way, maybe this is the time to say, we've said it before, it, the Torah is the will and the wisdom of God. So when a person really is involved in doing the will and the wisdom of God, he doesn't, he, she, is not concerned with anything that's what's going to be. Not heaven, not hell, not... Concerned only one thing. I am doing the will of God. This is the happiest thing in the world. There's no feeling of self. You're just doing what God wants. And you can see this in the, in the regular world. You see people that are into sports or into music, you know, great sports people. They're not thinking about themselves at all. They're just into the thing. The thing that they're into, the music or the sport, happens to be something that's physical and mundane, that it stops. But when a person does what God wants, it doesn't stop. We live in the normal world, so we don't feel what has been accomplished and we don't know what it means, eternal. But the fact is, is that every deed that's done, good, a good thing is eternal. That's why a good deed can wipe out a thousand bad deeds. Okay, but here's we're talking about getting connected to the source of all this good, source of real existence. Look, and therefore, Yatsabas call, oh, here it is, 
the Yatzav is called, there came out a heavenly voice, that Eleazar ben Gerdayev, he is going to go to heaven. Kamaisa Tzadikim is like the biggest Tzadikim, the holiest Jews. Shenani Niziv Shekhinah, they get pleasure from their Torah and their service. Avshaloy Elo Torah B'Mitzvahs, he never did any Torah and commandments. Mipanei B'chaz HaYosef Dabak B'Makoro B'Shor Shodakula, his whole life he devoted to running after these stupid in the, 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 the carnal pleasures. And he didn't, he, he, he got absolutely nothing from it, right? Except for a desire to do more. He was just always empty, running after this, but they figured that's what life is. And at that, he was very successful, you know, getting his desires. And miraculously, he always had enough money and he had enough to health and he had enough to go to do this. And suddenly he realized that the whole thing was a big mistake, a huge mistake. Right? He's selling his soul to the devil. And he's not just selling his soul to the devil, he's helping out the devil. Right? <clears throat> so he gets very bitter. So therefore, all of a sudden, he, 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 as soon as he cleans himself to the essence of the creator, so then there's no time and there's no space, there's no comparison. So we see a very interesting thing, at least this is according to Judaism. Here we have a man that his whole life he did sins. He was only interested in doing sins. He didn't care anything about God, commandments, Torah, nothing. Was One second he turned around and it flipped around his whole entire meaningless life to be meaningful and personal, him and God. And not every man can merit to this. Therefore, we pray to God. Not everyone can get to this level like Rabbi Shum. The and don't try it also because usually a person if he does sins he doesn't want to stop right he doesn't he doesn't feel this great deep regret deep regret he wants okay you know if I can if I can repent any time so I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it the next day and then the day, that and the day will never come he'll never actually return to God never he Rabbi Elizabeth was lucky right either but we are not at that level. Therefore, we pray to God and we say, return us, God. If you return us, then we'll return. What does it mean? Give us inspiration. <clears throat> Rabbi Lazar, I also had inspiration from that the lady that, that said, you know, the sneeze came out, it's not going to come back. That's it. But we're, not everybody takes that example. Not everybody learns from what's around them. So it's, we're asking God, God, send us to Hashivenu, return us to you, and we will return. Send us <coughs> the inspiration from above. She had tehila that first of all, God, you send some sort of inspiration in order that we will be afterwards an arousal from below, and we'll return to you. And even though that we say that after God created man, everything depends on our work at the root of that the, the whole God set up the world in such a way that. Everything depends on what we do. That God, God's arousal from above now depends on us. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we say, God, please make it like it was in the beginning. What, what was in the beginning? God did everything. God renew our days like before. What's before? Just like it was before the world was created. <clears throat> when God did everything on his own because God was just creating, creating pure kindness. That's what it means. We're asking God, make the make our days new. It means that the days are called hamshachas or day is revealing light. Like it's going to be in the future. The sun will not be a light in the daytime. That God will be a light. So we're saying, God, make our days, make our light like it was in the beginning. Just like in the beginning of creation, you did everything on your own, God. You created everything. You created the stars and the fish and the birds and you created, you created man. You did everything. So we're asking for God. I'll, we're asking God, God, also shine down that first light that was from the source, the rock that was the source. Even though that we have cut ourselves off from the first light that you gave, from this consuming fire, 
We're like him living in darkness. So we're saying, okay, God, listen, we admit it. We give up. <clears throat> We've tried. You, you've let us alone. That we can do. We're supposed to arouse you and do good. And we messed the whole thing up. So do us a favor, God. You can do it. We need more help. We need more assistance. We can't do it on our own. We do it on our own. We're not saying you made a mistake, but we are saying that we keep making mistakes. So we're asking God, <clears throat> reveal again your essence, just like it was Kedem, before the world was created, before man was created. When <clears throat> that God, just do good, give us good. And by means of this, why? Ha, ha, the, how do we draw this down? This is on Yom Kippur by means of the five prayers. Oh, I skipped the line. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, they say, oh, that's what it means. Keep Yom Kippur on Yom Kippur. That's Yom Kippur. The day, that's the day of Tshuva, the day when we turn to God. On Yom Kippur, we feel a little bit of the this rock we call God, the Tzur. <clears throat> the rock, the source of life. The, the, the high priest went into the Holy of Holies. What was in the Holy of Holies? The same revelation that was on Mount Sinai in the Holy of Holies was the tablets, the Ten Commandments. The same revelation that was on Mount Sinai, namely the creator, the essence, the reason why God's creating the world. God revealed on Mount Sinai. The creator himself. <clears throat> We're saying, God, and Yom Kippur, everybody gets a little ray of this. A little ray of this. <clears throat> it's above time, above space. There is no time, no space. Time and space, in a way, is just sort of an illusion. Even though, of course, it's not an illusion. It says in the Torah that there's day and night. And, but we we take it too seriously. We're trapped in time, so we think. But the fact is we're not trapped in time. If a person did sins in the past, even like Eliezer ben Durdai, that his whole life was one chain of uh, a series of sins, one after the other. His whole past was to completely destroyed. But one turn to God, and suddenly there's no past anymore. There's no past, present, and future. It's just godliness. Godliness. That's Bechina's Chafetz Chesed. That's God's pure kindness by means of the five, five prayers that we make on Yom Kippur. Therefore, Yechaper Aleinu Alechem. Therefore, God says, I will forgive you. God, He will forgive you. It doesn't say any name. Remember, that was the question we had in the beginning. Why does it say, on this day, He will forgive you? It doesn't say who. It doesn't say, on this day, God will forgive you. It says, with... <clears throat> Man, the lace, lay shame, this aspect of God that there is no name which is known, a, a, a perceptible, a, a conceivable name. The low et pas, the shame, God cannot be grasped in any name and not even hinted at in even a letter or anything. <clears throat> that's where this forgiveness comes from. It says, like, from the rock. It's the source of all names of God. Because all the names of God, this indicates on some sort of a light of God from nothing to something, from concealed to be revealed to be filling all the worlds or surrounding the worlds, which is not the case, the essence of God himself. And his essence, it's not relevant to say that God fills the worlds or surrounds the worlds. Sha'inu <laughs> begetter only that God is not in any sort of worlds at all. But interesting enough, from God's essence, that's where the world was created. From God's essence, that's where the Torah is given. Basham there, Mokara Slicha, and from this place, that's the source of all forgiveness. <laughs> A kapara, and 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 being clean. No say oven, like it says, God lifts up all the sins and He passes over on all transgressions. He lifts up before God. Legabi etzam uso by God's essence is not relevant to any sin or whatever. Ki im v'hamshachas ki bim v'hamshachas arose me or panov, but only by means of drawing from, from, no, I'm sorry. By God's essence, the, the sins don't have any effect. I mean, just one second. <clears throat> but where does, where do the effect, where do we make blemishes in? In all of these lights of God that comes down from godliness, by means of all these contractions and whatever, and the illusion, that's where the sins have an effect. <laughs> That's what it means in front of all of your sins. If before God, you will become pure. Lifnei Hashem, before, above, and higher than any names of God. Before there's emanated any names of God whatsoever. 
pitaron. It's let let, let me take an example. Maybe I, I don't know if this is a good example, but I'll give. Let's say there's a person. <clears throat> let's say a son and a father, right? So the son he steals from his father and he embarrasses his father and he curses out his father and he hits his father, does all these terrible things. And his father, get away from me. I don't want anything to do with you. And then the son comes one day and he says, Dad, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. He says, yeah, I know. I've heard this before. You just want money from me. He says, no, I don't want anything. I don't want anything. And the father looks at the son and he sees that it's serious. He's serious. He really believes it. He says, I don't want anything. All I want is just for, forgive me and I'm leaving. I, I'm, you'll never see me again. Please forgive me. The father looks at his son and suddenly realizes that, oh, all these things that my son did bad, that wasn't really my, this is my son. Oh, that, that's my son. That's my son that's connected to me, right? He loves me because I'm his father, not because of what I did, because of what, and I'm going to forget, love him because he's my son, not because of what he did. I'm not going to forget about everything. In other words, that's before any names, before the essential connection <clears throat> that there is. Namely, before there is drawn down and emanated any aspects of God, <clears throat> that's what we'll, we are appealing to on Yom Kippur. And this reaches this level of tzur, of the rock that God put Moses in the rock. This is talking about God put Moses in a cleft in the rock, namely in the essence of God, God elevated Moses, and that's where he revealed to him the 13 attributes of mercy, the essential connection between God and the Jewish people, that no matter what, you're my children, I love you, doesn't make any difference what sins you've done, <clears throat> I will forgive you. That's what happens on this day. It's above any aspects of God. And this, <clears throat> this uh, 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 idea of forgiveness and how close God is. I mean, a person can say, okay, that's very nice. The Rebbe is a big holy person and he knows. The Rebbe is trying to say that this is close to everybody. That God is infinitely, infinitely close to us. That's the whole idea. But it depends on our return. We have to genuinely return to the Creator. And it's not that hard because God is creating us. God is not just some you know, mythological figure sitting on some mountain or somewhere, or up in the higher stratospheres. But th that's also God, is also there. But God is creating us and he's intimately involved with us. So everybody has a soul. And that soul is your connection <coughs> to the creator. And that soul is the source of all healing and the source of all forgiveness. Just connect yourself to your soul. Feel how close God is. You don't need anybody else. And that the idea that everybody's a sinner and you have to be saved from your sins, you're not so. Everybody's essentially very good. But people make mistakes and disconnect themselves from this very good. And this, what the Rebbe is saying, is that the, the goodness of God is very close. But to make mistakes, unfortunately, is a little bit closer. So we have to get rid of our own <clears throat> egotism and our false selfishness and etc., return to the creator and how do we re get rid of our selfishness by bitterness say i'm not going to do that again enough i'm not going to take another drink i'm not going to steal any more money i'm not going to lie anymore i'm not going to cheat anymore i'm not going to be depressed anymore i'm not going to be aggressive anymore i'm not going to right and ask god for help and then suddenly the world becomes a lot happier and that's the idea of yom kippur it says the happiest day of the year was Yom Kippur, uh, happiest day. Says the, everybody knew that they were forgiven. And that ends today's class. I see that the person that has come, is supposed to come to uh, drive me out of my house. What's happened is, is that we had an, an attack of some sort of uh, fleas or something in the house. And um, so we're, the, uh, an exterminator is supposed to come. So when an exterminator comes, they have to leave unless I want to be with the fleas. So therefore, I'm not going to, uh, to continue the class, but I have to wait for the exterminator to come, and he has not come. So therefore, we will have a story. I'll tell you a story. Maybe we'll even do. Let's do the yom yom. Here we go. Do yom yom.